you're currently carrying a camera and a GPS on your backpacking trips and are thinking about lightening up your load by substituting a smartphone, this video will show you some tips to be successful at it. You can lighten up your pack weight substantially by concentrating all of your electronics into your smartphone. I used to carry about 26 ounces of gear and now I just carry my 6 ounce iPhone 6. First, let's talk about substituting the GPS. GPS screens have not really kept pace with current technology. The screens are small and are very low resolution and hard to read. Also consider the cost of buying maps for a GPS. They're incredibly expensive and you can easily spend $100 or more for a set of maps for a GPS unit. The equivalent maps on an iPhone or smartphone are typically free. The major thing you give up by switching from a dedicated GPS to a smartphone is battery life. With lithium batteries, my Garmin would last a good four days of tracking. Gaia GPS is the industry standard and comes in both an iPhone and an Android version. They can be downloaded from the App Store at a very reasonable price. Maps can be downloaded to your phone so that they're available when you're offline. You select the region that you want to download and the level of zoom detail so that you don't consume too much memory. Next, consider audio entertainment. One question that often gets asked is what to do in the evening when you're out backpacking and camping. I really like listening to books on tape or podcasts. The good news about using a smartphone for audio entertainment is that it's very low consumer of power. All you need to listen to podcasts is the native podcast app or use the popular Stitcher app. If you're using an iPhone, the native iBooks app does a nice job of handling audiobooks in conjunction with iTunes. Just a little reminder, don't forget your earbuds. If you plan to use your smartphone for reading in the backcountry, I recommend you pick up the Kindle app. It does a great job of displaying books on your smartphone. One of the books I like to take along on my backpacking trips is a guidebook for the area I'm going to. I don't need to read it extensively for long periods of time, but it's great to be able to consult the reference material in a guidebook while you're actually on the trail. Having a PDF map of the area you're backpacking to can be a great backup for your paper maps in case they get lost. If I plan to do extensive reading on the trail, I still bring my Kindle Paperwhite. It does a great job of visibility in low light conditions and allows me to read without use of a headlamp in the backcountry, nor without draining my smartphone. Now let's talk about substituting your smartphone for your camera. I ditched my point-and-shoot camera about a year and a half ago in favor of my iPhone when I discovered that the picture quality on my iPhone 6 was as good or better than uh, the Canon camera I was using at the time. I record all of my YouTube videos using my iPhone. They do a great job of 1080p recording at speeds up to 60 frames per second so you can get very smooth motion graphics. One of the biggest limitations of using a smartphone as your camera in the backcountry is the lack of a telephoto lens. The good news is reasonably priced telephoto lenses are now starting to appear on the marketplace. They're reasonably light and compact and portable and can be taken into the backcountry for those situations where you really want to zoom in on some wildlife. Another major limitation of using your cell phone camera in the backcountry is the image sensor is fairly noisy and does not do a great job of uh, long exposure photograph. However, you can get pretty good long exposure images of things that are well lit, things like waterfalls, where you just need an extended exposure. One little tip for something that I learned the hard way. On your smartphone, it's quite often easy to mistake the slow motion or time lapse recording for a regular video. So do check after you take a video in the backcountry to make sure it was recorded at the speed that you wanted. Another tip if you're doing videos is to make sure that the video recording is turned off while, when you put your smartphone away. Now let's talk about conserving the power in your battery in the backcountry. Rule number one, use airplane mode at all times. This will save a tremendous amount of energy in your battery. One of the questions that often comes up is when you put your iPhone, your smartphone into airplane mode, does the GPS still work? And in a recent version of the iOS operating system, this was changed so that 
the GPS unit still works even though you're in airplane mode and have no cell phone reception. The iPhone also has a low power mode that it switches into automatically when the battery is depleted. But you can manually turn that on and it will extend the life of your battery substantially in the backcountry. Let's talk a little bit about recharging your iPhone in the backcountry. One question that often comes up is the use of solar chargers. I haven't had good experiences with these so far. They're heavy and they don't really generate all that much power. So for the time being, until the technology improves, I recommend staying away from them. What I do recommend you use is to purchase a battery charger for your phone. These can be purchased on Amazon.com. It's at a very reasonable price. Get one that will recharge your phone at least two times over. If you're bringing other devices that you might want to charge with your battery, make sure you bring the appropriate cable for it. For instance, when I bring my Kindle, I always bring a USB charger cable. If you're bringing a battery, I also recommend that you upgrade your headlamp to a USB rechargeable headlamp instead of one that uses batteries. This will allow you to share the same backup battery for your headlamp. Last but not least, I bring all of my electronics in a waterproof sack to make sure that it doesn't get any water damage and that it also keeps things organized and in one spot. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about using a smartphone in the backcountry to substitute for your camera, GPS, and reading devices.